Okay, so now we're talking to Trevor Beck about Pro Tools. Trevor, tell us about your day job. Okay, well day to day, a lot of my work is post-production for video and TV broadcast type of things. Also do a lot of live music projects and uh, I work on a lot of opening ceremonies, Olympics, Commonwealth Games, that sort of thing. And all that sort of different work involves Pro Tools to some level or some degree. I've been using Pro Tools since before it was actually called Pro Tools. So I followed it right through all the different incarnations right up to now when it's Pro Tools 9. Okay, so Nine's brought some new features. What, just before we get onto that, what's been some of the other exciting developments that you've seen over the history of Pro Tools, just in a nutshell? Well, really, when Pro Tools first started, you know, it was only three, four, five tracks. Yeah. And we've gone right through that now to where it's full surround in multiple formats. Your track count is, is quite scary, really, in how many mm. things you can get plugging out a single computer. Uh, elastic audio, that sort of thing, the ability to stretch and compress a track live to whatever tempo you want is, is, is very, very clever. And that existed in other programs, but took a while to get into Pro Tools. And then, of course, the MIDI implementation. Now, when you buy Pro Tools, the amount of instruments and things you get in it is a huge ability to compose and create straight out of the box. Fantastic. That's so really, really good. That's great. Okay, so what, what's new in, in Pro Tools 9? I think the biggest thing is that now you don't have Pro Tools LE anymore. It's now Pro Tools 9 native and Pro Tools HD. Okay. And what that means is that the software installer is just the one program, so it simplifies the whole process of upgrading. Easy download. Easy download. You don't have to think about it. And then it just opens up and authorizes based on what you've got in your iLock key. Yep. Uh, the big, big changes is that you no longer need uh, digital design hardware so that your program will run on your Mac and you don't have to have anything plugged into it, or you can use your favorite interface. Uh, some Pro Tools interface, or most Pro Tools interfaces, give you 16 ins or outs, up to 18 on some. But of course, there are other interfaces now which give you a lot more than that. Yeah. And you can have up to 32 ins and outs simultaneously on Pro Tools now, so you can use your, your favorite interface the way you like it and still use the Pro Tools software. Brilliant. And I think that opens them up to a lot more people who mm. before didn't mind the software, but didn't want to be locked into any specific interface. They wanted to do it their way. Sure. Um, the other big change in Pro Tools 9 for uh, the LE or the non-HD users is automatic delay compensation. Uh, it means that the tracks take account of whatever you've got plugged in, delay the track accordingly, essentially for when you're mixing, keeps the imaging accurate. It keeps you phase accurate. Uh, phase accurate. And when you listen to that, if, if before without delay and with delay, it's quite astounding the difference until mm. you hear it you don't really appreciate how great it sounds, particularly on overheads and drums and all that sort of thing. Yeah. That's been a really, really good change. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so as far as the actual workflow goes, what's, what are some of the new features that, that we see in 9 now? Well, a lot of the new features, as I said before, really benefit those who are on an old LE style system now. You get simple things like uh, the import and export of uh, AMF, AAFs, OMFs and MP3. All of that used to be a purchased upgrade. Mm. Uh, some of us, like myself, had to pay thousands of dollars over the years to get that, and now they're giving it away for free. Um, so that's a big boon. Session import, when you say, look, my session's running, but I want to grab something from another session I've done, you used to have to just grab all of whatever you selected. Yep. Now you can pick whether you want the media or just the plugin settings, the hardware assignments, the playlists, and just pick the bits you want. So it saves heaps, as you can imagine, of drive space and time because you're not copying data that you don't need. You're just getting the bits that you want. Okay, now talking hardware settings, um, you can now store your I.O. settings in a system file as well, can't you? Yeah, yeah. The import-output, so import, output, yeah, is saved as both a, a system on your computer as well as a per-session file. So if we're collaborating on a project, traditionally, every time you send me the project, it remaps my session, and I've got to go through and redo all my busing and all my assignments. And then you send it back to me, and I've got to go through and do the same thing. Now I can choose whether that happens. Uh, and I can say, ignore your inputs and outputs, use my, my system inputs and outputs, so it maps your session to me. Uh, additionally, if the session's been used on, if the computer recognises that it's been on this computer before by the MAC address, it'll automatically map to that if you want it'll it to. It'll remember its last configuration it'll remember on all that the, machine. Yeah, it'll remember all the different MAC addresses it's seen before and ask, do you want to map to that? Okay. Brilliant. Save stacks of time, because that stuff's not creative. No, that's, that's, that's just, boring. It's your drudgery. Yeah. It's the, yeah, 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 okay, now I'm ready. You know? Now, on the note of drudgery and boring and, and saving time and space, catalogs. Tell us about catalogs. If you haven't used catalogs before, and again, they've always been in HD, but not in LE, they're a cracker of a thing. What it means, in the workspace, you can set up a catalog and you can create a catalog and then subfolders within that. You can collect all, say, your favorite drum samples or the sound effects you're going to use for that session into that catalog or into that folder. It's just an alias, so it doesn't chew up any space. Yeah. 
And then if you drag that into your session, even if that media is not actually present because you've got a drive unplugged, it'll load it as an offline media. And then later on when you bring that drive online, it makes it all active. It's a quick way of accessing your most commonly used effects and drum samples. But the big boon too is at the end of the project, you say, okay, I'll finish that and I really want to keep a backup of everything I've used, but I don't want to go hunting for all the different folders. You drag that catalog onto a new volume, a new drive, and it copies and consolidates all of those aliases as new files and new folders onto that drive. Brilliant. So one step back up kind of thing. Yeah. And you then save that with that project and you're done. Uh, and secondly, we all know that when you make a session, you, off, you, you don't necessarily think, oh, it was snare, big snare, fat 300. 327. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, always yeah. 327. Yeah, you don't do that. What you <laughs> yeah. do is you go, oh, in that song, I really love that mm. snare. So now you just go to the backup. Pull up the file. Pull up the there. catalog. It's there automatically. It saves stacks of time. And again, you get on with making music rather than get on with being a forensic audio guy looking for that folder that yeah. I know is there somewhere, you know. Okay. Um, now, tell us, there was, there was one other thing you were talking about, which, which we discussed earlier, the trim functionality. Tell us about trim, because yeah. that sounds really cool. The trim functionality, I use it a lot when I'm doing post-production. So I've run through and I've done my dialogue mix, I've done my effects mix and my music mix, and then I just want to balance the dialogue in relation to the effects in relation to the music. So I don't want to rewrite my fader moves, because often, particularly if you're using live or production dialogue, it's tricky because you've got mm. rid of a lot of noises. You go into trim automation and it simply offsets what you've already done. So it keeps all your fader moves and just pops them up or pops them down depending on what you do with your fader. Now at the end of the pass, when you hit stop, it keeps that data separate. So it's not committed to anything. So you haven't lost all your fader moves. You've lost none of your fader moves. And if you decide you don't like it, just delete it. If you love it, at the very end you go coalesce, which basically merges the data, writes it into your fader moves, still keeping all yours of course, but just offset. So it's a really easy and safe way to update all your mixes without ever have running the risk of going, oh, I've lost something that took me hours to yeah. get just right. So the trims, again, trims always been there in HD. It's a new thing in Pro Tools 9 Native because the software now is much more compatible with what the HD users have been using for a lot of years. Uh, and all those things really take your mixes to the next level because you can be more intricate and more creative and faster to so get on with the job of being musical. It's very, very good. Okay, so overall, as far as version 9 of Pro Tools goes. So do you think it would be a fair thing to say that for, for existing LE users, it probably represents much better value than for HD users? Or you think everyone has is, is got something to gain out of it? It's a good upgrade for everyone. Um, and if you're running an HD system, it's not much of an investment given what you've already spent on the cards and the hardware yeah, anyway. Yeah. So you'll upgrade by nature. If you're an LE user, it's got a whole bunch of features that until you actually hear them and try them, you won't realise how good they are. Um, and I'm actually surprised that more people haven't upgraded quicker from LE to, to 9 because I think it's, it's a very big upgrade. It's just not as obviously dramatic maybe in some mm. ways. But if you look in the detail, it's a really, really good update. Okay, now a lot of live operators are using DigiDesign consoles or yep. added consoles as the case may be now. The profile's got a lot of popularity. Um, is that popularity an explanation of why people are getting into Pro Tools more than perhaps before? I think. If you're a live guy and you want to mix live like you always have, yeah. but you want to move into recording, multi-track recording, and you want to be able to keep your plugins and the way you approach your work consistent, uh, it makes a lot of sense to get Pro Tools. Because for, and it's manufactured by manufacturer, but a lot of them, the plugins you use on your studio computer yep. is the same authorization live. So you can do something in the studio, take it to live, you can record something live, insert the effects you want and bring them back to the studio without having to change have those software. those same parameters and so on. Without having to reconfigure yeah. everything. Um, it's a very easy transition. So I think it's a good way of getting your live recordings quickly into the studio. Yeah. And, and again, carrying that consistency across the board. Where, and I, it interfaces smoother than a lot of other software does that. So I, I think it's clever because obviously you've got the Avid console, the Avid software, you moved your studio, you've got your Avid software, and it just, it's all very, very easy. Mm. There's no hiccups. Okay, cool. Um, and as far as the actual transition from previous versions to version 9, do you think people are going to find that an easy process? Is it, is it easy to yeah. adopt? Has anything fundamental it, changed in the workflow, or is it No, 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 it's, pretty... it's the familiar interface. The upgrade's very simple. It all self-installs. There's no great dramas. And in fact, because you don't have to have the DV toolkit anymore and the Digi Translator and the Music Production Toolkit options, it actually installs easier. And you find that there's less things to step through and go, I have that or I don't have that. You mm. just pretty much 
install and off you go. Beautiful. Now, one thing to be aware of is, of course, on Mac, it requires OS 10.6, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just the latest version of Mac. Doesn't yeah. seem to be, and Windows, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm sure there's an answer in that somewhere. <laughs> anyway, Trevor, thank you very much. You're very welcome. That's Pro Tools 9.